Perpetually put upon YouTuber Shane Dawson recently uploaded a new video to his main channel for the first time in months called Conspiracy Theories with Shane Dawson 2023, including a thumbnail image that shows him with some sort of zigzag laser headband, a confusing and distracting thing on his head that I guess is now sharing the role with the traditional holder of that title, his hairstyling choices. But rest assured, nobody was as confused as Shane himself a few days after this video's release when he posted on Instagram that it wasn't performing well due to unfavorable treatment from YouTube's algorithm. First of all, let's not blame the algorithm, Shane. She is the only one who has stood by you throughout all of your cancellations. In fact, she is a swarm of unthinking code that is incapable of judging you based on your appearance, your status, your use of racial slurs, your inappropriate interactions with children. You know what? We should cancel the algorithm. She sounds toxic as hell. The point is, we saw your video, but I think the reason people aren't clicking as much as you want has more to do with the inscrutable thumbnail, the title that doesn't tell us anything about the content itself, and how your tired topic of conspiracy theories makes this video impossible to distinguish from the dozens of other podcasts you put out that seem to be more obsessed with the Mandela effect than the actual biographer of Nelson Mandela. But those who did their best to try and help support your bad click-through rate were treated to another Shane Dawson masterpiece complete with out-of-touch elitist sentiments, unwelcome romantic advances, and your old standby schlepping through some grocery store to prove a point that doesn't exist. Like, girl, if the algorithm did have anything to do with this, maybe she's just finally learning how to do her job and identify low-quality content. So, for those who are ready, make sure to strap on your designer elephant footwear and start clipping coupons for some name-brand savings in another knockoff nacho-scented shame Dawson flavored installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web. And we break it down like an MK2 experiment from the CIA and the FBI because we're talking conspiracy theories, baby. So we can look at each individual clip and decide if it's holding weight or if it's Freedom of Information Act false. And mama, if you want false, look at the false drama that Shane is concocting for this video, which is based around a conspiracy theory that is actually just something most people already knew about and don't really have the same extremist opinion on. But first, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see me cover even more Shane Dawson breakdowns like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive bonus episodes and virtual watch parties. Now, this video starts on a rainy day in Los Angeles as Shane Dawson's house in Wyoming or Montana or wherever the f rots in emptiness, even though that was gonna be his whole personality at one point. Shane greets his camera fellow outside, Chris, and before Shane can get into all of the tea on this new conspiracy, he has to beg for attention. First time growing out my hair, I'm nervous and insecure. It looks really good so far. Are you fucking serious? No, I think it actually looks really nice. What? I just wanna thank you somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you can just use the words thank you, <laughs> please, Mr. Shane. Don't make me go in the thanky spanky closet again. It freaks me out how Rylan just watches from the corner the whole time scowling at me. Well then, Chris, you better be more careful about telling Shane that his Albert Einstein, Chucky Finster hairstyle looks nice every time he fishes for a compliment. But also, what's wrong? As one of Shane's yes men in camera twinks, his thank you spankings and threats of oral sex are some of the most high value and mandatory perks of the job. Since Shane is always utterly obsessed with making sure his hair looks okay, it's kind of amazing that he's never even accidentally stumbled on a style that makes his hair look okay. He said, it's at an awkward length because I'm growing it out. Growing it out to where? The surface of the moon? I think at this point, we need to accept that your hair is awkward at any length, as long as you keep blow drying it out into these amber waves of pain. Just tell him the truth, Chris, that this haircut makes him look like a neck bearded incel whose fedora just flew off when he rode down a hill on his razor scooter. For this conspiracy theory, the huge corporation that Shane is needlessly targeting seems to be Trader Joe's, at least to begin with. When he starts talking to Chris about how amazing their animal crackers are, 
car. And then he drops the bomb after padding out the runtime with a bunch of videos from other creators by letting Chris know that those Trader Joe's animal crackers, despite seeming to be like better in quality to most of the reviewers, are actually the same exact ordinary ones you find from Stouffer's at other grocery stores, just private labeled. And that's uh, that's the whole topic for this video. Mm, I hope you didn't already know that private labeled grocery store foods were a very common occurrence because then you'll find this to be quite unearth shattering. But like I heard that these are like better than regular animal crackers. <laughs> well that's where my theory is different. Okay, this is not really a theory, it's just real. It's also not really a conspiracy, it's just a well-documented business practice that you recently became aware of yet don't care to fully understand because that would make it harder to sensationalize. As part of a glorified hour-long grocery store vlog, complete with 25 minutes of unedited and untransformative content from other food reviewers who you do not credit. So fun, so fun how you help smaller creators by not. That's right, this entire video video is about how those generic store brand products like Walmart Great Value or Kroger Simple Truth are usually the same exact product that the well-known name brand next to it is selling, but sold under the store's private label for a lower cost. The way Shane puts it, this is all part of a grand scheme from our corporate overlords to trick people into, what, spending $2 less on chocolate chip cookies? Shane, obviously there is a reason private labeling can exist with without destroying this economy. But even though he could have easily taken some time to educate his audience on something that's, you know, actually interesting, that's not really an option for Shane, whose love languages are fear-mongering and playing the victim. How is it that Shane can offer no other explanation other than the existence of some nefarious secret when it comes to a store brand's Dr. Perky tasting exactly like Dr. Pepper, but then he can offer multiple long-winded explanations about how that video of him screaming the n-word was actually some astute social commentary and part of a joke that we just didn't get. I guess context is only important when it helps support the Shane Dawson narrative and justify his ignorance and gaslight us into thinking he's funny. The term private label describes products sold under a retailer's own store brand but that are made by a third party known as a private label manufacturer. These store brand products, sometimes called generic, rose to popularity in the 1980s and they were often sold in bland and white packaging with zero branding and very basic lettering. And basically, this is something that helps everybody. The manufacturer can sell more of the same product it was already producing to the retailers who were already carrying it, while also providing it at a lower cost because that sale doesn't need to cover the expense of marketing a product nationwide. For example, if General Mills can sell your regional grocery store a box of cinnamon Toast Crunch for $2 a box, that price not only pays for the cost of the cereal itself, but also the TV commercials, contests, box designs, and free prizes that the brand is constantly switching up to help sell more Cinnamon Toast Crunch. The price goes up because it costs that much to make sure everyone in the country knows what Cinnamon Toast Crunch is. That means in order to make a $1 profit, your local grocery store would have to sell that box for $3. Then, let's say General Mills also works out a deal to license that product to the very same grocery store but with their own label and packaging on it. And they can sell it to the store for only $1 a box because General Mills doesn't have to make commercials for this unknown store's cereal brand. Your local grocery store can afford it because they might just have to go with one unique packaging design that's highly based off of the original product and then they pay for none of the bells and whistles like the toys or the sweepstakes or whatever. They also don't need to advertise this product on TV since enough people will be exposed to it when they look for Cinnamon Toast Crunch and see the store brand comparable product at a much lower price. That's just gonna sell itself to people who wanna spend less money on cereal. And since the store brand only costs the retailer $1 per box, they can get their $1 profit by retailing it at $2, which would be in this made up example, $1 less than the General Mills Cinnamon Toast Crunch name brand version. Your local grocery store wins by getting to sell more products to more budget-minded shoppers, General Mills gets to send a higher volume of their product to the stores that carry it, and the consumer has the option to buy less expensive products if they're willing to go with an 
unrecognizable brand. That's not cannibalizing Cinnamon Toast Crunch because the way that we shop psychologically, we often choose the, the brand based on recognition alone. And the name brand product is going to be more widely available than the lesser known product that is only available market to market. Shane didn't seem to get all of that background information before shooting his video, even though it's all available on the first page of Google without even having to click one link. And as we've come to learn, if there's a topic that Shane Dawson doesn't understand, that means it's either a scam, a conspiracy, the Illuminati, aliens, or most recently, the unfair YouTube algorithm. Shane, I get that you're like an expert on making excuses for your own ignorance, but have you ever considered that it's not the Illuminati's fault you never got a college degree and didn't learn how to do basic research in high school? Food for thought. Put that in your red laser beam headband, sis. Doing a great job of hiding the hairline. Sure, something about these particular conspiracy theories doesn't smell right, but thankfully my fragrance story is completely under control thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. Scentbird, who I've partnered with many times, is a fragrance subscription service that I love because it helps me evolve my relationship with fragrances and learn more about how I experience the world through scent. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance from top fashion houses and indie brands every month for just 17 bucks, which is a huge deal, especially compared to the $300 to $500 that a full bottle of fragrance can sometimes cost. This carrying case perfectly holds your fragrance. You're not getting some random sample or some minuscule little bottle that has one spray in it. I find that each vial really lasts me much longer than 30 days, but it depends on how you wear your fragrances. I love this royal purple color and the neutral beige is so chic. Speaking of chic, this month I get to try Oud to Greatness by Initio Parfum. It's a bold yet really natural smelling fragrance. I also have Royal Forest from English Laundry. I could sit here and smell this one all day, easily my favorite of the month with fresh citrus notes and apple. It feels like being outside at an orchard. I am obsessed. And then finally we have Kian, which is a word from the Atna language in Southern Alaska, meaning new moon. This one feels like walking through a forest in the winter at nighttime, made with juniper, mint, fir, and then that apple note that's kind of been trending for spring. Apples are one of my favorite things to eat. Sometimes I'll even eat one before bed just so that I have the smell on my fingers, which is why I'm so grateful a couple of these fragrances have that note. It's all of that same great sensory experience without getting my fingers sticky. Check out brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace, and indie brands like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. Use my coupon code NICTORAMIO55 for 55% off at Scentbird. It's just a little over $7 for your first month, available in the USA and Canada. Apparently, Shane wasn't the only one who didn't know that private labeling products means that they're often of the same quality as the name brand, because Ryland and Chris seem completely mystified as well. They are going nuts learning that there are entire stores of private label products only, meaning every item in there has the store's unique branding. The one of the most popular examples being Trader Joe's. So I guess this is the mind-blowing conspiracy that will eventually lead Shane to float through a space station of dollar bill walls wearing a zigzag crown of fire. No, no, the thumbnail was just pointless. I swear, he does a new Photoshop tutorial and whips it out for these videos, wanting us all to think that he's some sort of creative genius. How is that legal? I don't understand. Like you go to Trader Joe's, like these are all bougie exclusive items that are like slightly healthy. Well, Shane, it's legal because of free market capitalism, and also because there is nothing unfair being done to the consumer. Like how are we being scammed when Trader Joe's sells us a pack of cinnamon rolls that were really repackaged from Pillsbury? The reasonable price? Is that the scam? The only injustice here seems to be that you find it confusing, and you're more or less unteachable. Also, where did Trader Joe's ever explicitly tell you that their Scandinavian swimmers were slightly healthier than the regular Swedish fish you would get at the movie theater? Because it wasn't the nutrition panel I'll tell you that much. Sure, Trader Joe's packaging might be designed to give you the feeling that their food is more organic or trustworthy, but that's why it's our responsibility to make health-related decisions and purchases based on more than just how 
quaint and curly the font is on a product or how pinstriped its packaging looks. That's why the nutrition panel is always just a plain box with no additional branding. It's just raw data that you're supposed to read and then interpret as a way of deciding whether that's a good choice for you or your family or your pre-diabetic ankles. Also, you can tell how badly Shane wishes it were still 2016 based solely on how hard he's trying to make the word bougie happen again. Yeah, Sara Lee is kind of like an expensive bougie bread, right? This is like an expensive kind of bougie pizza. Oops, splurge, treat yourself bougie. The definition of projection is Shane Dawson calling out the bread that you can buy at gas stations for being bougie while also wearing a Louis Vuitton cell phone carrier while also complaining about how store brand products give people the opportunity to buy more affordable food. Like, what is your main point here, Seanson Johnson? That national brands should charge less for their food even though that is the cost of making them a national brand? Or that people who pay for store brands should be getting a proportionally lower quality product? Because there's literally nothing more reminiscent of the bourgeoisie than thinking that the proletariat should be happy with bread made from sawdust or plaster of Paris porridge while the richies sit up in their mansion cracking open a fresh baker's dozen of crumble cookies every time they get bored. Just saying, you're the bougie one, bougie booty. The video shows that lots of other people who do grocery store hauls were duped by these animal crackers that are the same as the animal crackers that both look and taste the same. Even if these were different products with completely different recipes, he had to have recognized that they all tasted and looked exactly the same. Unless he's saying that he's literally never eaten a generic grocery food before. Which again, bougie, booty, you so fruity. Eat your wheaties, I'm Doug Fluty. Time for Ryland to get the full scoop on this earth shattering news that Shane Dawson has just discovered. There's an example of that cinematography that Chris was credited for at the beginning of the video. Up, down, up, down. Very nice, very nice. Why wouldn't we want to get multiple glances at those young Frankenstein feet hammering down the hardwood hallway? Shane had mentioned in one of Ryland's previous vlogs that he had some sort of surgery to correct his ankles. I mean, they still don't look right to me, but hopefully they're functioning better. In either case, frankly, I wouldn't bother wasting my money on all of those designer sneakers if they just end up looking like the non-slip safety shoes I had to wear when working at Dunkin' Donuts. Shane drops some more truth bombs on us such as the roasted pistachios from Trader Joe's are not any more special than the pistachios sold by Wonderful Pistachios, even though the Wonderful Pistachios are more widely available and are like a name brand that you see on TV, which again explains why they cost $2 more. But Shane wants to act like Voldemort lives within the soup aisle and he's the one who invented this whole idea. A lot of private label products are very quiet about who manufactures them. And the way that we found out Trader Joe's pistachios were sold by Wonderful was when a food recall happened and they were all lumped together. Then Shane escalates the situation by revealing that Stacy's pita chips are the same as Trader Joe's pita chips. And he was equally as betrayed by the Starbucks cup that he uses to hold the liquid that he's planning to turn into piss. Now this was $5. This is $30. Five below went to the manufacturer and said, hey, we want Starbucks cups. And they're like, oh, we'll just send you our cups and we just won't put the little Starbucks in there. Again, Shane is talking like he's under the assumption that Starbucks is world renowned for their innovative cup designs. And his $30 plastic tumbler was a custom creation from the house of Bucks, but then it was illegally sold to bargain stores by an unscrupulous cup manufacturer. Interesting, but isn't it more likely that both Starbucks and Five Below sourced some tumblers in a pre-existing stock design from some overseas manufacturer, probably in China. We found it. But Starbucks paid like a few cents more per piece to add their logo to it and then retailed it at $30 for a $28 profit as opposed to Five Below pricing it at $5 for a $3 profit. Like it just kind of feels like Shane is eager to position it as though the manufacturer is the one that ripped off poor innocent Starbucks and thus devalued the piece of 
cup that he paid $30 for because he's so proud to tell us that that's the price as though it would ever be justifiable unless it had a computer chip in it. I think the more obvious perspective would be that Starbucks is the one ripping off their customers by trying to make it seem reasonable to buy a cup for $30. All because it's an exclusive item that only rich people deserve to carry. Obviously Shane sees it as a fair price for the branding and exclusivity and therefore both he and Starbucks are being mistreated when the same piece of junk is made available to the street rats who are, don't have enough and would never consider spending that much money on a dollar store item. Like girl, what are you not getting? Even your black Balenciaga t-shirt the size of a parachute cost $5 to make. Sure, maybe some of the value comes from the actual improved stitching or higher quality fabrics, but it mostly comes from the way it makes you feel when you get to own something fancy with a big billboard logo on the front letting the whole world know that you have money. Arguably too much money and not enough common sense. It's probably the same reason Shane never realized the store brand toaster strudels taste exactly the same. He saw that it was from a less recognizable brand and therefore wrote it off as not worthy of giving him his 10 a.m. blood sugar spike. That's very telling, Mr. Booby. I think I meant to say bougie, but I kind of like that better. Get a load of these AliExpress iced coffee cups, Mr. Money Tits. Now Shane dives into the lower cost world of the private labeled goods at Aldi and he starts listing off some of the known dupes from store brand products at that store. They're not hiding it at all. Like when you go to the store, they have the fake cereal. You're right, they aren't hiding it at all. Which to me makes it clear why this shouldn't be called a conspiracy video. It's more like a long, frustrating documentary about an out of touch man baby who buys his own groceries for once and learns something new about the world in the process. I'm not saying that these stores and the manufacturers aren't benefiting somewhat from the fact that less informed consumers will just assume these products are produced by entirely different sources or that they have completely different recipes or some sort of special ingredients in the more expensive one. But on the other hand, the store brand actively advertises saying compare this to X, Y, and Z brand, knowing that it still won't influence everybody's shopping habits when the name brands are also paying for better shelf placement, more highly publicized discounts and sales events, and visual in-store advertising that the store brand just doesn't buy into. These things actually make a much bigger difference, since as humans, we mostly shop with our emotions, or in Shane's case, poorly regulated emotions and damaged sense of self. That's what makes him the perfect label queen for mega companies to target as a lifelong loyalist to whatever diet root beer they're shilling. Also, get your story straight, Shane. You keep calling the store brand products the fake cereal, where the name brand are the real ones, when in fact, the real point you're trying to make is that both of them are exactly the same. You haven't even unlearned the artificial brand hype that you just told us about. Why? Mm, because maybe it doesn't fit in with your image-obsessed worldview, the lens through which you filter every single thing that you do. I guess it makes sense. We've never seen Shane display passion for any social issue or larger charitable cause, but he will stop the presses and start raising money by selling Livestrong bracelets to get the word out whenever his specific and narrow interpretation of events has been called into question. Like when people didn't see the humor in his music video that depicted a horrific attack on a Taylor Swift lookalike, or in this case, when he feels like he's been lied to by his favorite brand of potato chips. Damn, Shane, you need to get out of the house and volunteer at a food bank or something. I'm sure they can find you a pair of dish gloves to wear when handling the Stop and Shop brand of Chef Boy RD, since we know how much that triggers you. Try not to rip open every box of crack just to taste test and confirm that they are in fact identical. I didn't know Shane Dawson was in a Taco Bell commercial, but that must have been at a much more marketable period of his career. Either way, they have to stop there and see if they can conjure up any other conspiracies. Thank you. Tell them we weren't yelling at them. Do you know any conspiracy theories about Taco Bell? I'm gonna end my life. It's not dog food, right? He's like, um, it will be when you three start eating it, Fido. Imagine riding around with this group while it's raining outside. I mean, Ryland is already participating in gay culture by being an unsafe driver. Chris is providing the soundtrack of his ceaseless mouth breathing. And Shane's shirt got a little damp. So now this fancy SUV smells like it's 
full of yeasty golden retrievers who just went swimming in a lake. I'd be like, can we not add the smell of Taco Bell ground beef to this like whole fiesta? I, I don't think we need it. Luckily, we can breathe again when it's time to enter Aldi and shop around for some generic verse name brand products. Again, you said they were the same. We get it, they're the same. We don't need to show me a thousand times. I know it's hard. I used to shop at the dollar store when I was a kid, but don't get the food there. Why? Because it's not real food. So they sell cheese there, right? Make it so cheap. There's no cheese in it. It's so not cheese that they, on the packaging, they literally can't say the word cheese. Stop. So they call them sandwich, sandwich slices. slices. Ryland's like, wait, then legally, is that what I'm supposed to call the buildup that gathers in your foreskin? Shane's dick sandwich slices? Maybe I'm confused. Can you imagine the nerve of Shane? Someone who's gotten millions of views on videos that are showing him eat rainbow mac and cheese and ranch flavored gummy bears. Now getting on camera and shaming people who buy their food at the dollar store. All because they carry and sell sandwich made American slices, which by the way are also carried by every other grocery store in America. And it's a cheese food made from vegetable oils and starches. So it's also vegetarian, not just more for and it's not because it's cheaply made. I mean, that's part of the reason, but it's also to offer a dairy alternative. Anyway, I guess that one example of one product is enough to generalize all of the dollar store food as not real and gives Shane the right to tell people not to buy it. Like what? Forgive me if I don't take this snooty nutritional advice from Shane Dawson, who often brags about having unhealthy bowel movements and gurgles up Diet Coke during his waddle sessions on the treadmill. Ryland tries to bring some order to the conversation but Shane shuts it down with his zero research. Is that any different than like the Kraft Singles? I'm pretty sure it's Kraft cheese. Uh, Kraft Singles are also classified as a cheese food. They are made with milk, however. Sandwich Made is classified technically as an imitation cheese food because it's not made from milk, but I'm sure Shane has eaten both of them multiple times throughout his life without blinking an eye. On his gas station nachos, in his movie theater pretzel dip, and I would venture to guess as the personal lubricant that Ryland uses to entice him to have anal sex. Nobody's marriage is perfect, okay? And before we judge, we should all look within our own marriage boudoir to make sure that the walls aren't crusted with cheese whiz like a bowling alley concession stand. Even if it's not real cheese, that doesn't make it not real food. It's processed cheese like you've had a thousand times. And like many people, that's the only option. Like it's not lacking nutrition. They put calcium in it. It has vitamins. So Shane and gang gather up all of their purchases, the generic foods and the store brand. And he brings them to a kind of rundown motel out in Simi Valley, which is where I used to work, like 45 minutes to an hour outside of LA. And of course, Shane has to be very mysterious about what they could possibly be doing inside of these less than luxurious accommodations. I don't know about this. This is f***ing scary as f it feels like dirty and very creepy. <laughs> Shane's like, ugh, why do all of my camera twinks say that whenever I bring them on a secret late night motel excursion? I'm not surprised that Shane is acting like he's terrified walking down the very normal looking hallway of a three star hotel. You see, when he's not pretending to be outclassed in rich people places, he's acting like any location meant for non-millionaires is some sort of saw trap designed to kill him. The most disturbing thing I see going on in this hallway are the Alice in Wonderland proportions going on between Shane's flat, basset hound looking hair, his little tiny purse, and then that cartoonishly large travel mug. It's like watching someone who got trapped inside of a funhouse mirror, where he's lying in wait, rubbing those tiny hands together in hopes that one day an unsuspecting child will happen across him and agree to answer his riddles three. Stay away, little Johnny, it's not safe. So now comes the suspenseful task of comparing these store brand foods that we've already established are the same as the name brand foods by dumping them out and looking at them and reacting as best as we can. These from Aldi. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Oh. Oh my god. Like nothing different. Yeah, Ryland, because it's the same food, which you already told us. We didn't need to get dragged to yet another grocery store as the main action in one of these pieces. 
videos that Shane came up with. In what world does it make sense for people to react so strongly to a bag of salty snacks? I mean, it would make sense for Shane if he seemed like someone who cared about his high blood pressure, but I have to call into question anybody's storytelling ability who thinks looking at cheese curls is the next paranormal activity. Also, how are you all more emotionally present when reacting to a paper plate full of Cheerios than you were on your wedding day, or when you discuss why you want to have a child with one another? I feel like they're gonna have to roll that newborn baby in cheddar cheese dust at the hospital just to prevent Shane and Ryland from losing interest in it on the way home. Shane will be like, uh, I think I'm ready to start editing this video. <laughs> And roll it out into the valley. Shane is now blindfolded, Chris, because even though these foods look identical, we can't see them or we'll know which one is which, even though they look identical and taste identical. Like, we get it. This one's insane to me because that Dorito smell is in both of them. They are the same foods. We said it, we said it. There was no need to buy all of this junk two at a time just so you could breathe your microbes all over it. Frankly, I am sickened by where this video ended up. Shane is so manipulative. Like, isn't it clear what's going on here? First, he got the three of them to check into a distant remote motel under false pretenses. Soon, Chris is suddenly wearing a silk blindfold that was clearly purchased at a sex store. And now Shane is burying his face into those bags of Doritos, imagining that it's what Chris and Ryan Silence taste like and make me sick. Finally, Shane orders food from three different locations. One is called Pascali's Pizza and Wings. One is Red Robin and one is like a, another burger place that is less known. And once the food arrives, it's clear that these are all ghost kitchens, meaning Chuck E. Cheese sells food on delivery apps under the name Pascali's in order to get more takeout orders because people don't traditionally order from an experience Oriental restaurant like Chuck E. Cheese and Red Robin, I would assume it's in order to drum up more business from people who want something a little more curated or gastropub-like than they are recognized for being. This puts Shane on a whole long tangent about how it's a scam. I can see why a consumer would be more upset about this if you think you're paying for something special, but it's actually something ordinary or widely available at the same price. Unless they were charging more for it, I think, you know, there's no law against saying you can't make an online business that's named different from your brick and mortar business, but whatever. This could have been the whole video. Like the grocery store thing was the majority of the runtime and it makes no difference. So yeah, I guess the uh, theme of the video is don't believe everything you see or everything you eat. Part of me wanted to do this video because it was like funny and interesting, but then the more I got into it, the scarier it got. I had the same experience as a viewer, except it was never funny or interesting. I guess I just got scared towards the end when the conversation turned to Shane's cheese, then he started offering cool ranch rim jobs, and then they started squirting ketchup into each other's mouth like, ugh, guys, this is the most uncomfortable roundabout way of letting Chris know that neither of you have gag reflexes. So please just untie him and let him go home. His parents are worried. Well, I hope that this has thoroughly ruined your appetite, and I hope you enjoyed yet another Shane Dawson suck fest. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Also, give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps support the channel, but most importantly, if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when Pasquale is delivering the pizza mouse. You guys are all the greatest. Also, thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Check out their links in my description. Don't forget I have merch, the Patreon, where you can access exclusive bonus content and more. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for calling upon the name brand gods and shaming the poor with me today. I will see you next time.